I met Mr. Kane while I was employed at the Educational Foundation of the National Restaurant Association. About a month before I was terminated, I interacted with him on several occasions during the five days of the NRA convention in Chicago. About a month later, I was let go by the foundation. I was devastated. I loved the job and the industry, and in the short time that I had been there, I felt that we were really doing well in terms of fundraising. My boyfriend suggested that I should reach out to Mr. Kane to see if he might be able to help me find another job with the foundation or in some other capacity. I then took the train to Washington, D.C. When I checked into the room, I was shocked. Um, I had a palatial suite, and the bellman, I said to the bellman, there's got to be some mistake, but he insisted that there was no mistake. I later found out that Mr. Kane had arranged for the suite, though at the time I thought maybe my boyfriend had tried to surprise me. I met Mr. Kane in the lobby of the bar at the Capitol Hilton at around 6.30 p.m. We had drinks at the hotel, and he asked how I liked my room, which is kind of normal, and I, was very, I said I was very surprised. I said, I can't believe it. I've got this great suite. It's gorgeous. Um, Mr. Kane kind of smirked and then said, I upgraded you. He then took me to an Italian restaurant where we had dinner. During dinner, Ms. Mr. Kane looked at me and said, why are you here? I said, actually, Herman, my boyfriend whom you met suggested that I meet with you and because he thought you could help me because I really need a job. While we were driving back to the hotel, he said that he would show me where the National Restaurant Association offices were. He parked the car down the block. I thought that we were going to go into the offices so that he could show me around. At that time, I had on a black pleated skirt, a suit jacket, and a blouse. He had on a, a suit with his shirt, op with his sh shirt open. But instead of going into the offices, he suddenly reached over and he put his hand on my leg, <coughs> under my skirt, and reached for my genitals. He also grabbed my head and brought it towards his crotch. I was very, very surprised and very shocked. I said, what are you doing? I, you know I have a boyfriend. This isn't what I came here for. Mr. Kane said, you want a job, right? I asked him to stop, and he did. I asked him to take me back to my hotel, which he, he did, right away. I didn't file a complaint against Mr. Kane as some of the other women did, because I wasn't employed by the foundation when this occurred. But now, I'm coming forward to give a face and a voice to those women who cannot, or for whatever reasons, do not wish to come forward, and on behalf of all women who are sexually harassed in the workplace, but do not come out of fear of retaliation or in public humiliation. I really didn't want to be here today, and wouldn't have been here if it had not been for the three other women who have alleged sexual harassment against, against Mr. Kane. I want you, Mr. Kane, to come clean. Just admit what you did. Admit you were inappropriate to people. America is in a, and, and then move forward. America is in a horrible turmoil, as we all know. We need a leader who can set an example, which exemplifies the standards of a good person and moral character. Mr. Kane, I implore you, make this right so that you and the country can move forward and focus on the real issues at hand. Thank you.